1.4, the limit of a function. I like to call this the intended height of a function. And let's run through some really cute little examples here to help you remember. So let's say we have a guy here with a really long nose and he's getting closer and closer to this fan. And we're gonna talk about the breeze function. Breeze function is how much wind is he getting as he goes closer and closer to this fan. So let's say I said that at at um, when he was at one, he had there was a speed of um, six kilometers per hour. At two, it was at seven kilometers per hour. At two and a half, it was seven point six kilometers per hour. At two point nine, it was seven point nine kilometers per hour. Maybe even one more. Let's say. Um, B at 2.99, he was at 7.99 kilometers per hour. So the question is, what is the speed at 3? Now, you don't want to get so close that you stick your nose in the fan because that would be a bit of a disaster. So it's not, it's it's how close can you get? It's like getting to the edge of, uh, if you're standing on the roof, and how close can you get to the edge of the roof before you fall off? That's the limit. So if we could approach this fan from either side, and I said, oh, this is my breeze function here. And you could measure all these speeds or the wind speed as you got closer and closer. And, and we're going to estimate that when we were at three, it would have been eight if we could have gone there, but we don't because it would be a disaster. So if I approach from the left-hand side here, so coming from the left, going this way, I approach a height of, uh, uh, sorry, I approach, I'm at three meters from it and I'm at eight kilometers per hour. And if I came from the left-hand side, the right-hand side, oh my goodness, I'm getting this all backwards, this would be the same speed. So the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. So the limit exists. We don't go there, but the limit exists and the limit would be eight. Okay, so for a limit to exist, the limit from the left must equal the limit from the right. Now that's a two-sided limit, two-sided. So, Let's watch what happens when we do something with a piecewise function. So let's say I had this piecewise function. f at x equals 3 for x greater than 1. So here's greater than 1 and I'm at a height of 3. And x is negative 1 or f at x is negative 1 for x less than or equal to 1. So I have a solid circle here and I'm going this way. And we have what we call left and right hand limits. So a limit from the left, you put a little negative sign. And a limit from the right, you put a little positive sign. Okay, left, right, negative, positive. And I said, what's the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f at x? So from the left means we're coming this way. So as I approach from the left, I get to a height of negative 1. So I would say approaching negative, approaching 1 from the left, the height is negative 1. If I approach 1 from the right, I would be coming this way. And as I get really close to 1, I'm at a height of 3. So I do have a left-hand limit. It is negative 1. I have a right-hand limit that is 3. But the limit as x approaches 1 because they are not the same, I say does not exist, okay? Does not exist because the limit from the left must equal the limit from the right. For most functions, nothing terribly interesting happens when you find a limit. In fact, for all polynomial functions, all you need to do is plug in the value for x to get the intended height or limit of the function. For example, if I said g at x equals negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 1, and I said, what's the limit as x approaches 2 of this function? All you would do is plug in 2 for x. Now note that as soon as I plug it in, I do not 
write the limit any longer. Right? I just write it like this. I've plugged in 2. And that would give me 4. Negative 8 plus 10 is positive 2 plus 1 is positive 3. So the limit exists and the limit as x approaches 2 of this function is 3. Do not write the following. We should not write it like this. The limit as x approaches 2 equals 3. Limit of what? You have to have the limit of, of something here. Okay, so don't just write limit x approaches 2. It's meaningless. Okay, so a bit more tricky, and we will do more of these in 1.5 um, where things aren't so obvious, would be something like this. What's the limit as x approaches 4? Well, you know that as soon as you plug in 4 here, 4 minus 4 is 0. And if you were just a little more savvy, you could probably draw me what this function looks like. It's a graph of 1 over x shifted to the right for units. So when x is 4, I have an asymptote. And I have a function that looks like this on this side and like this on this side. It's just 1 over x shifted to the right 4 units. And if I said, what is the limit as x approaches 4 from the left? You would follow this line down here and you'd say, oh, negative infinity. And what's the limit as x approaches from the right? You'd say, oh, it's positive infinity. So the limit from the left is nowhere equal to the limit from the right. And you would say, does not exist. Okay, so that's one where it doesn't exist. There are some in 1.5 that we will do some manipulations on in order to find the limit. So let's talk a little bit about limits and continuity. Continuity means that you can draw a function without lifting your pencil, doesn't it? It means it's a continuous function, ooh, like that. So it says the notation, the limit as x approaches a of f at x equals L is red, just like I read it to you. It means that the value of the function f at x approaches the number L as x approaches A from either side. So that means it's a two-sided limit. We went from the left and we got to the same number as we got when we went from the right. One-sided limits, that's what we're talking about when we have this little negative or positive sign. A left-hand limit denotes a limit approaching A from the left side, and a plus denotes a limit approaching A from the right side. So left and right-hand limits. Two-sided limits, if f at x approaches A from the left, and you get L, and the limit as x approaches A from the right of f at x, and you get L, then the limit as x approaches A is L and it's equal to L. So that's just saying if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right, just like if I drew this here for you, so if I came from the left and I came from the right and I come to the same place, then the limit exists and the limit is whatever this height of your function was. Let's say it was four. Now, it doesn't have to, the limit for the limit to exist, this point doesn't have to exist. In other words, I could be driving along the road here and I get to this place here and um, maybe it was my favorite restaurant and it burnt down. So it's no longer there. If I came from this side, I come along and I get to the restaurant and it doesn't exist. But I came from the left and I came to the right and I came to the same place. So it doesn't matter if this point exists in order for it to be a limit. Okay, the limit from the left equals the limit from the right even if there's a hole here. I'm going to do some examples in a second. Okay, so um, limits that fail to exist, if you have a limit from the right, is not equal to the limit from the left. Here it was, right? This was the same height. But if I come from the left like this, and I come to this point, and I come from the right, and I come to this point, so this would be an example of a, a limit that does not exist at a point, let's call it A. The limit does not exist. The limit from the left was, say, 2. The limit from the right was 4. That's all good, but the limit as x approaches A from both sides is not the same. 
So the limit does not exist. So that's the limit as x approaches a of my function does not exist. A continuous function, in order for it to be continuous, now, I don't think this is actually in this section, but it, it'll come up soon enough, so it doesn't hurt to talk about it now. So the value of a is in the domain. So in this question up here, this value here wasn't in the domain of the function, right? There's no point there. There's a hole. So it'd be like 1 over x minus 2, where minus 2 was a hole. So if there's a hole there, then... It's not continuous. I had to stop here, I had to draw this little circle, and then I had to continue. So for it to be a continuous function, we have to have something like this. F at A, let's call this A right here, exists. It's on the function. The limit of F at X exists. Now, for the limit to exist, it means coming from the left or the right, I still get to the same height. So the limit exists, then the function is continuous and is continuous for a, for all values of a in the domain. That's all this says. Discontinuous is just what we did up here. It's discontinuous at a, or f has a discontinuity at a, when a is not in the domain of f, that is, f at a is not defined, so that would be a hole in the graph here, right? f at x, the limit as x approaches a of f at x does not exist. Well, it did here. Or when the limit is not equal to f at a. So we could also have a little point up here, right? If I stuck a point up here, then the limit from the left was equal to the limit from the right. The right. f at a does exist, but f at a is not equal to the limit. So this would be discontinuous, and we would have what we call a jump discontinuity or a point discontinuity. There's a point that's out of the... Uh, continuous part of the function. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples. Um, this is a handout that I used to give to my students, and I'm just going to run over some of these very quickly so you get an idea, a little better idea of limits from left, right, and limits as they exist. So this one here. So here's my graph. Somebody's already drawn it. Hooray, hooray. It says, what is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of this function f of x? So negative 2 from the right. So I'm coming this way, from the right. Make sure you're coming from the right direction, right to left. From the right, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right is 0. That's the height of the function. What's the limit as x approaches 0 from the left? 0 from the left. So we're remember, we're approaching the x value. As we approach 0 from the left, my height is 2. So this would be 2. What's the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? From the right would be 1. What's the limit as x approaches 0? Well, the limit from the left was not equal to the limit from the right, so this one would be does not exist. What is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? 2 from the left. The x approaches 2 from the left, I get to a height of 1, 2, 3. All right, so I would say 3. What's the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? It's also 3. What's the limit as x approaches 2? The limit as x approaches 2 is 3 because the limit from the left was equal to the limit from the right. Remember that this does not mean for a limit, this point does not have to be part of the domain just the intended height from the left and right. What is, uh, they don't ask you this here, but what is f at 2? f at 2 is 2. See, there's a dot here. So this is a point discontinuity. What's the limit as x approaches 4 from the left? 4 from the left is 4. Now, you can't say what the limit is as x approaches 4, because we don't come from the right at all. So if I said, what's the limit as x approaches 4? You'd say, it does not exist, because I can't approach 4 from the right. Okay, let's do one more, and then we're going to leave that for you to figure out which one do you think would be the better one here. I think this one, number 2. Use the graph, given graph of g, to state the value of the limit if it exists. 
what's the limit as x approaches negative 3, negative 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, from the right? That would be 2. What's the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left? Negative 1 from the left is 2. What's the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right? Oh, that's 1. What's the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x? Does not exist, right? Because the limit from the left was not equal to the limit from the right. What is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? 2 from the left. 0. What is the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? 0. What's the limit as x approaches 2? 0. What's the limit as x approaches 1? And I should be saying of g at x each time, but that's too long. The limit as x approaches 1 of g at x? Well, the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. It is 1, so my answer would be 1. Okay, so if you want to um, just have a look at some of these other questions, I can leave this up here for a second while you freeze frame it. Um, and you can see there's some piecewise functions here that my students had to do and find where something was discontinuous. So if we looked at this graph, let's talk about continuity just for a second here. So for this graph, the function is discontinuous at 2, at x equals 2, because there this has to be filled in for it to be continuous. That's all you have to remember. It's also discontinuous here. This would be a jump discontinuity. And this would be a point discontinuity here. Okay, so does that help you out? Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of limits and continuity. There are more lessons on continuity later as well. And um, I hope that helps you out.